Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, any small business podcast, we are talking all about business fatigue and how to battle it, how to stop from burning yourself out. Now's the time you need to hear it. Hopefully this helps a bunch of you. Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. You have hundreds of episodes. This has been going on for four years, weekly. If you just stumbled across this podcast, I did a bad job of advertising it. (laughs) But have a look around. It's anywhere podcasts are found, of course, and even on YouTube if you like to play that in the background. Uh... I have a face for radio, so maybe not watch it. But either way, have a look around. Um, And uh, full disclosure, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do. I am a salesman. Uh, I sell products. I'm a product specialist. But I've also owned a company for like 16 years. Right. So, shameless plug of the day, which I do in every episode you'll see, is that I want your orders. I want you to watch the podcast, love the podcast. There's tons of you, thousands of you who watch this every single week that watch all of them, everyone, and you order through me. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me put your orders in. And if you don't have a rep yet and you're like, you know what? I'm going to do something nice for somebody today. Let me put your orders in. Big or small, it does not matter. That is what I do. My number is 862-312-2026. If you're going to write it down, I'm going to say it again. Let me put your order in. Text me. Just be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it through. My number is 862-312-2026. And save that number. I'm the only Jersey you know, I'm pretty sure. (laughs) But anyway, let me put your orders in. Shameless plug, of course. Um, And shameless plug number two, I also own American Widow Cleaner Magazine. So if you ever wanted to get into a little bit more, right? Bring your business kind of to the next level. Invest yourself in your company again. There's articles from a lot of amazing journalists. There's awesome pictures. There's new products. There's giveaways. There's posters. And, of course, sticker sheets. You can deck everything out with window cleaning stickers. Mm -hmm. By the way, you can even join a sticker club. Just get the stickers. You don't even want a magazine. You're like... I don't like your stupid magazine. You could join the sticker club. But uh, that is awcmag.com. American Window Cleaner Magazine. awcmag.com. Go there. Sign up. Get all the stuff. Just do it. Oh, and one other thing. I am almost to, when I'm recording this, a thousand followers on the TikTok. So if you are into some window cleaning humor, I guess. Just the life of a a contractor. You may enjoy it. Uh, Find me is Jersey WCR Nation. Jersey underscore WCR underscore Nation. Find me and follow me because what the heck. Anyway, okay. Longest intro ever, I'm sorry. But today we are talking about battling fatigue. Now, let me first start off by saying... No matter what position you are in your business, this is going to happen. You may think that, ah, dude, it's going so well, man. I just could never get burnt out. I love it. Cool. Uh, That is the exact same thing everybody in business thinks until all of a sudden one day they wake up and hate everything. (laughs) And that's fatigue, right? You could take a, a company you love or something you love, right? Say you love chocolate cake. You decide you're going to eat it every single day. Oh, man. First week's awesome. Chocolate cake. Yeah. Oh, I get to eat cake again. Yeah. All of a sudden, week two starts. You're like, all right, uh, more chocolate cake. Kind of, you know, I had my chocolate cake, right? Nothing new, (laughs) you know. Well, fast forward seven years. (laughs) Actually, you know, business burnout, I think, is like five to seven years. You push so hard to get your business somewhere. You push so hard to kind of, um, you know, get your business, not off the ground, but more or less kind of uh, going like a baby, right? You're trying to get it built and, and build a life for it and all that. It takes up all of your time. And all of a sudden, it kind of does its own thing, right? There's a certain point where a kid's like, 
goes and watch TV, hangs out with his friends, right? They don't need you as much, which is cool. You're like, ah, oh, I did this. But then there's a point where you're like, well, then what do I do, right? It's kind of like a stay-at-home mom. So a lot of times when you see a stay-at-home mom, they will, um, they will watch a kid until the kid goes to school, and then they'll go back to work. Right? Or maybe a year they'll do after the kid goes back to school. And they're like, yeah, it's boring. I don't know what to do. Right? They go back to work. It's kind of that same concept. In your business, you will fatigue. You will burn out. You will get to that point of just like, man, I can't find happiness in this anymore. And it happens to everybody. And it doesn't mean you're a bad business person. It doesn't mean you sell your company and jump ship. Right? A lot of people do. But what happens is if you don't catch or understand your in fatigue or slow the fatigue, all of a sudden you realize that for the past two years, you've done nothing to accelerate your company. And that's cool if you're in a chill step, right? There's stages in business. There's build, there's reinvest, you know, and then there's coast. There's always coast. Coasting is, is something that you earn, right? But if you don't want to coast, don't get burnt out. It's really, really hard for you to go back on something, right? Go back to the chocolate cake thing. If you eat chocolate cake every single day, then all of a sudden you take a week or two off of chocolate cake and you're eating everything else. It's really hard to go back to eating just chocolate cake, right? So what you have to do is you have to battle that. You have to get in the mindset that even now you have to straighten the mind, clear the mind, disconnect from the company just a second and take a break. Because just like things that burn too hot, like a light bulb, if it burns too long, it burns itself out. It can't be fixed once it's burnt out. And this is for you kids who don't know what an LED bulb is. I just realized you probably can't even buy condensed bulbs anymore. But right? Enough burning burns out the bulb. You can't ever start it back up. Right? So let's talk about that. Because right now, all of us are busy. We're all swamped coming on the year. Man, this is the best, biggest year ever. Right? The biggest year ever. And you're like, I just, I just, man, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Ha <laughs> ha. A big thing that the growth period entrepreneur, which a lot of you are probably in the growth period, right? And hear me out. A growth period means you're putting everything back in. All you're doing is focused on growth. All you're doing is focused on getting bigger, better, better, stronger. If you're in that period, you have to understand you need breaks. You need breaks. There's a trade-off. If you're not working seven days a week in your business, you're not going to build your company as fast as somebody who's working seven days a week, right? If you'd worked seven days a week in your business and the other guy took off weekends, you would have 104 extra days of work. That's a lot. That's a lot more than the guy who takes weekends off. So understand there is a trade-off, but understand that for the long term, that guy who's who's disconnecting, even if I know a lot of you guys work on Saturdays, I get it. You know it's burning you out though, working so much. Right? Sunday comes, you're like, oh, I don't have to work today. Huh? It's bedtime? Oh man, I gotta work tomorrow. Right? Disconnect. You need breaks, you need days off of work. Another big thing that people do. It's like, oh man, I'm too big, like huge convention or any of these things, these shows that come up. People go, oh man, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't, I can't, I can't break away. I just got too much to do. You're the boss. You understand how stupid of an excuse that is? How ridiculous of an excuse that is? You make the schedule. You make the schedule. Don't ever, I know a lot of you do, so don't be pissed. But don't ever tell me, ah, I just can't get away. You literally can. You chose not to. That's why you scheduled stuff that day. If you wanted to take off 
you know, September 3rd, you just wouldn't plan anything on September 3rd. You wouldn't book anything September 3rd. And if you did, you'd move things around, right? It's on you. You're the one that chooses not to have days off. People go, oh, man, well, I'm so busy. I got to work Saturdays. Well, that's because you don't have the staff. Yeah, but I get slower. Yeah, that's all service companies, right? If you don't take breaks, if you don't disconnect enough that gets you excited to go back, you're always going to be in that burnout stage. Here's a big thing. Say there is a, 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 a hundred, you know, a, a hundred pieces of motivation in you. All day, you spend 20, right? But if you don't do anything, you recoup 50, right? In that theory, if you didn't take Saturday off, you lost out on recouping 50 but spent 20. Now you're only recouping 50 starting the next week. You're already low, right? It sounds stupid. I know, dumbest analogy I've done. But the truth of the matter is you have to take the breaks. You have to force yourself to take the breaks. And a lot of you, it's really hard. A lot of you may not have hobbies or you did and just don't have time, right? Don't have time for it. It's cool. It's a passion. Dudes have hobbies. A lot of women who watch this show, maybe you have hobbies too, right? Hobbies are different maybe. But as somebody who is in business, you put those things to the side because you end up doing more business. You have to have something to get excited for. Because eventually, every day in your business, which is your excitement is not exciting. It's the cake every day. You have to have something to look forward to. Hobbies, pleasures, things you're like, oh man, I get to go on that cruise in a couple months. Or I get to go to that 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 island or or we call it the beach, but you know, you may go into the ocean or something. For me it's the mountains. Love the mountains. I love being able to go up there and just go peace and quiet. For that, works for me. For you, maybe something else, but you have to find something to get passionate about. Maybe it is a hobby. Maybe you're not actually going anywhere. We can't all do vacations every week, right? Instead of going somewhere, now that's where hobbies come in. Oh, man, I love building furniture. I love, uh, you know, racing um, RC cars, or, you know, being in video game tournaments, or whatever things you like to do. And I will never crap on a hobby. No matter how nerdy or how uh, cliche cool it is, right? You could play Dungeons and Dragons, or be a cosplay guy. Or you could go and shoot a 50 cal at the range. Both of those are things you enjoy. So why crap on any of them? Enjoy something. But you have to have something to enjoy to break away from your company. Because otherwise your company is what you do and focus on and everything. And again, you're back to cake every day. If you can't have a hobby or time off, you can't take off Saturdays, you can't come hang out at a convention with me because you're too busy, now we have a problem. You're not properly staffed. A big thing is Going into business, there's times where you will not be properly staffed. It's just how it works. You can't hire staff when you don't have the work, and you can't have the work without the staff, right? So there's this catch-22 period where things are kind of screwy. So there are times where you'll be understaffed. There are times you'll be overstaffed. I understand both suck for their own reasons. But if you're working every day of the week, God, you got to get it done. A, charge more. Charge more, strengthen the customers. Why would I charge more? Because you're not a Walmart. I had somebody tell me the dumbest thing they've ever, I've ever heard, ever heard from a window cleaner. And I know this particular person does not watch podcasts, so it's none of you. But they said to me, they said, uh, yeah, I go cheap. <laughs> I don't go for... Uh, highest priced, I go for volume. 
I do more work than anybody else. You're an idiot. Okay, Walmart gets, will say, 40%. Or 50%, because it's easier at math. They get 50% profit on everything they sell, right? If they drop that down to 25% of everything they sell, right? They bring their prices down, but they sell three times as much stuff by cutting it in half. They make more money. If they drop it another 5%, now they only make 20%, but it increases volume and sales by 10%, they make more money. You, as somebody who sells an hour of the day, you only have 24 hours in a day. If you sell that hour of your day for 50% less than the next guy, you now have to work twice as hard, two times as much to make the same amount of money. There is no volume discount on labor. There is no volume anything on hours of the day. There just isn't. It doesn't make, it makes no sense. If you're 50% cheaper than the next guy because you work twice as much, you're making the same amount as the other guy. He's way smarter than you, right? So if you're working 60 hours a week, increase your prices by 20%. 20% increase, you may lose 10% of your people, but now you make more money. You work less. You're not going to burn yourself out, Right? Make sure you're pre- uh, staffed properly. Your staff is who makes sure that stuff gets done. The biggest, biggest downfall and worst thing you could ever do, and people don't think about this until it happens, but the one of the worst feelings and things is that when you have a staff, right, and you have staff, but that staff is fully booked, right? That means you're doing, say, 100 hours of labor a week or whatever, 80. Well, two people doing it. You're getting 80 hours of work done in a week. If those people leave, you, one person, has 80 hours of work to do now, right? That sucks. That's where that happy thing is, that kind of medium thing. But you cannot be understaffed. I know all of us are understaffed, but that needs to be a priority. I know companies who have been properly staffed, lost somebody, so that person now works a little bit more, which then all of a sudden everybody's a little bit stressed. They lost another person. Now that the, the, the owner's working 10 times more. And then all of a sudden, fast forward four years, they're the only ones doing work because they just don't want to hire anybody now. It's just too far gone. I know those companies. So you have to be staffed properly. It has to be up in your repertoire is hiring it has to be hiring has to be in order for you to not fatigue out right another big one's no procrastination now me and my add brain which you all know i have that procrastination is is a really big part of life right Business owners hate taxes, so they do the taxes at the last minute, right? They, um, you know, they uh, know that they have to hire somebody, but God, they hate the process, so we'll just work Saturdays, right? Procrastination will double your fatigue. Stuff that sucks, get it done now. Get it done now. You have to. If you get that crap done that you hate to do, you can totally, totally focus on the better side. You just can. Right? Procrastination is a big, big killer. Procrastination is what takes something that should only hurt for a minute and make it hurt for a long time. For example, tax. I hate the word, even. PTSD. I got PTSD like most of you, right? I, 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 uh, I've I been affected by taxes. But think about it. Taxes, you can get your stuff. Do it all year. Put the stuff together. Hit click print on a QuickBooks and give it to your accountant. Done. 
That's it. But we all know we're going to owe. We know we're going to get screwed. We know this. We know that. It's such a pain in the butt. So all of a sudden, January 31st comes. Your um, uh, docs are out. Your your W-9s. Your, your all that. W-2s. Sorry. Are out. Everything's done. You can, February 1st, you can file. But what do we do? February 1st until mm, the end of March. Beginning of April. Every day, every other day. Oh, man, I got to get those taxes done. Got to get those. Ah. You just took something that should suck for a couple minutes. And you made it suck for three months. That's procrastination. If you hate hiring, right? If hiring sucks and the people suck and you're just over it. That procrastination means now you're working 60-hour weeks, which means you burn out, which means your staff burns out, which means do you recover from burnout or does it just fizzle out altogether? There are certain situations in burnout, like a firework. When that fountain you bought from Walmart, you light it up and it goes off, there's a point where it is just done. Nothing you can do can bring that, that spark back. Nothing. Nothing. And that's business. You may have the spark right now. Understand 100% of the time, it will disappear. If you've been doing this for 20 years and you come and tell me, oh, I love my business the whole time, you are full of crap. There was a day or week or month or season or years that you just didn't quite care like you used to. It's going to happen. It's just mitigating and and directing it, right? People know floods happen. But they also know how, when the flood does happen, to stop it, protect it, right? Oh, man, it's going to rain a ton. Let's get some sandbags out there. They say, okay, it's going to happen. But how do we protect what we love from it? That's this, battling fatigue, battling burnout can't procrastinate because again if you procrastinate now it will happen it will come to fruition at some point and now you've just extended that suck by the way this is a side note i want to i want to tell you something everybody always tells me that i'm a positive person i am I, I do try to be positive and even in the worst case scenarios i try to like see light i guess right you can choose positive or negative some of you choose negative and that's cool that's just your disposition but there's something about worrying. Humans are the only creatures that worry. The only ones. When, say a bird, if it doesn't eat every day, it dies. Right? A deer. Whatever. So their focus is eating. They don't worry about not having food the next day. They go, I gotta get food next. I gotta get food tomorrow. That's what I have to do, right? Humans worry and there is absolutely zero 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 benefit to worrying worrying is not planning by the way people are go yeah well you worried about taxes so you save a little extra no no that's planning worrying means you think of a problem the problem in your brain happens and now you just have that problem in your brain way longer than normal if you worry about something for a month Instead of just going there and doing it that day, you could worry about it the whole day that you're doing it, right? What about the dentist? People put off the dentist because they don't like it. They worry about the dentist. I got a dentist. Oh, I got. Oh, this is, oh I'm getting. A, uh, I'm getting my tooth drilled. Oh, I'm gonna. Jeez, oh, uh, two weeks until I get my. T- now you just get your tooth drilled for two weeks, basically, because it's in your brain worrying. If you're worrying about business and doing nothing about it, it's absolutely the most useless skill humans have ever developed. Is worrying. Planning is not worrying. Because here's the thing. As soon as you worry about something, I got taxes coming up, man. Last year I got screwed. I better put another 10% of every check away. Oh, guess what? I'm not worried about that anymore. All right, sweet. Right? You don't worry about things that you can't be worried about. If you have a problem, right? Oh, man, I'm working 60 hours. This job is so big. Poof, I got another employee because I knew this job was coming up. I 
I'm staffed well, got all the new equipment, everything's good. Cool, this job's going to be a piece of cake. As soon as you plan, you can't worry when there's a solution. You only worry when there's nothing that comes from it. Worrying does nothing. Procrastinating does nothing. Procrastinating does not save you from the, the headache or the pain or the, the tension of whatever it is you're worrying about. It just doesn't. You do all that. All you do is you take one problem. If you go to the dentist, how long are you in a dentist chair for? Ten minutes, an hour, right? So that could be an hour. Or it could be two months, two weeks, whatever. What would you rather have? Same thing in business. You're worried about this big job coming up? Why? Why are you worried? I don't know, I'm just not going to have enough people. I don't know if my equipment's good enough. I just get the equipment now. Buy the equipment so you don't have to worry about it. Hire now so you have the staff, right? If you need temps or you need somebody, contact one of your your um, window cleaning buddies and see if they can help out with the job. Don't worry, plan. And another big one, this one, this, this, this has logic. I'll explain the logic once I tell you, but it's it's just to listen, watch, and absorb. Just absorb all the content. Speaking of, you're watching or listening to a window cleaning podcast, you nerd. <laughs> By the way, it's awesome. But there's like this, American Window Cleaner Magazine. There's magazines about window cleaning. There's YouTube channels on window cleaning. I do live contents on window cleaning. steve and I do a podcast. There is, um, you know... Um, 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 magazines and and websites and uh, YouTube videos. I was just gonna say, uh, YouTube videos. You could be watching Steve-O's content. Guys f- washing windows. TikToks. You go well, yeah, but if I surround myself with all this stuff, I'm gonna. But okay. Here's what I would suggest as far as that. If you surround yourself with the content. There's always going to be something to spark interest. Always. It could be something as simple as buying a new squeegee because you saw some guy doing it. Right? Or taking a situation and laughing at it. I've never had. Never. In all the content we've done, this this podcast here has touched a million people easy. Right? Downloads, videos, everything. Absolutely amazing. You guys put your orders in through me. You know who I am. I get to be your rep because of this. It's done so many amazing things. But I've never, ever had something like TikTok. By the way, if you watch my TikToks and you text me to put an order in, just be like, yo, I love your TikToks. Say something about the TikToks. Because of all the people who have said that, it connects with so many people. It gets so many people to call me, text me, allow me to do my job for you. And it makes me money because of it. And now the reason is, is that I love to do health stuff. I love to do this, right? I love to do private coaching. I love all that stuff. But the big part of TikTok is, is it's different content. It's different content. It's just something that somebody can go, oh my gosh. Yeah, that that homeowner, I get exactly what you're saying. And it's this other thing where they can see things and they lighten it up, but it sparks them in the industry. That's content. That's stickers. These are cool. You get new stickers? Yeah, it's all window cleaning stuff, but like super cool. Why not? Right? The magazine has posters. Put yourself around posters. Yeah, it's an industry you love. You love this industry. This is rad. You get to do this. Surround yourself in it. All the videos, the podcasts, you're already listening to one. Follow TikTokers. Follow YouTubers. Follow all that stuff and absorb the content because it will always keep a spark going in your business. The big thing is, is that like in fire and stuff, it'll go out unless you blow a little on it. And that same wood, the same fire, the same everything could be ignited again, right? You can do that in your business. It's just by surrounding yourself. And I'm not saying on Saturday and Sunday you have to do window cleaning stuff, but in the other realm of things where it's not just you cleaning for a customer, you doing this, you doing that, whatever. You get to then pull yourself apart 
from that and see the lighter side. Create a spark. It's pretty exciting. But anyway, battle fatigue, I'm telling you it will come if it hasn't already. And if it hasn't or you haven't, please put your orders in through me. My number is 862-312-2026. It is a cell phone. Call me, text me. Let me put those orders in for you. Of course, get the magazine. You have to. You have to get the magazine. Why? Again, absorb the content, but it means the world to me if you did that. AWC MAG. Just go in there. It's actually awcmag.com forward slash sub. And just get the subscription. I love. I would love for us to have 10,000 subscribers. That means that 10,000 of you are like on another level. It's pretty cool. Anyway, get it. It's awesome. Read it in the bathroom. I don't care. Uh, get the stickers, of course. Join everything. Be everything. Don't burn yourself out. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.